of the screen of Minister I am Ignatius Nko. Now the Senate, at the first session, the Senate screened three nominees. Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, Senior Advocate of Nigeria from Lagos, an immediate past Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Dr. Mahmoud Mohammed from Kaduna State, Senator Bemisola Saraki from Kwara State. And then the Senate is expected to screen the remaining six nominees. And now the next person, the next nominee for screening is a two-time governor of Oshun State, Raouf Arebe Sholaf from Oshun State, being ushered in there by Senior Special Assistant to the President of National Assembly Matters, Senate, Etainan. And the nominee's supporters behind him. This is the first nominee to be screened by the Senate today. A political activist, two time governor of Ocean State, former Lagos State Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure, Raouf Arebe Shola. His political participation dates back to his school days when he served as a speaker of the Student Union Parliament of Polytechnic Ibadan. And since then, he has remained very active in national politics. Raouf Arebe Shola has mounted the podium, set to receive questions from the Senate. colleagues, <coughs> we have the next nominee in the person of Governor Rao Farag Bishola Ogbeni, the former governor of Washington State, the Excellency You are welcome to the Senate Chamber. On behalf of all my colleagues here, we want to welcome you to this very important screening exercise. Copies of your CV have been distributed to all the senators. You can still, however, emphasize and highlight those areas that you think requires some special noting by the Senate. And should you have omitted any important thing from the CV, you are at liberty to talk to those that you have omitted. Once again, you are welcome. I also welcome the distinguished senators and members of the House or representatives who have accompanied you into the chamber for this hearing. You can address the Senate. That done, and it simply means all praises and adoration is due to Allah, who must be praised forever. I recognize and salute the President of the Senate, Dr. Lawan Hamad, the Deputy Senate President, Obi Homa Gege, and all the principal officers of the Senate. As I 
proudly recognize senators representing Oshun and Lagos there, the two states that I have affiliation with, one natural, the other political. I recognize Senator Suraj, Dr. Suraj Ujinajibala Bashiro, Oshun Central, Senator Adele Uyulu, who, when we knew one another in school, was Monshud Rahimi, which is now Senator Adele Uyulu, representing Oshun West. My born, remarkably, of the other party, but representing me directly, because represents my own constituency, remarkably. And I believe, in due course, he will do the needful by moving to the best part of the Senate. A bon Francis Adeniba, Padam C. Oshun East. I equally must recognize senators from Lagos. Lagos provided the platform for my national recognition. And I must recognize Lagos senators. I recognize Senator Ulure Mitinubu the matrack of Ashwajola Metinubu family, my leader and my mentor, Lagos Central, Senator Solomon Adiola Olamilekon. We call him Yayi. Yayi represents me where I to claim Lagos because uh, the largest senatorial district in terms of, elect in terms of electoral capacity is Ocean West, and my local, my federal constituency there is the biggest federal constituency electorally in Nigeria. That is where both of us come from. Senator Solomon Adiola Ola Milekon. My friend, Dirkulai Adebayo Oshinowo, Lagos East. The other name is known with popularly in Lagos is Peperito. I recognize him. Sitting by Senator Oshinowo, is Senator Michael Okweyemi Bamidori. He succeeded me in student movement. I left before he got in. But like Siamese twins, we have been working together. He was with me in the cabinet of Lagos. Bamidori Okweyemi, I thank my organizer. It will not be right for me to stand here before distinguished senators and not recognize the senators with whom I worked as a governor. And looking at me directly, uh, my good friend, former governor of Rono, Chetima, who encouraged me all through my time and the most difficult period of my, of my, of my, of my tenure as a governor. I'm happy to know that Kashim Chetima is here as a senator representing Borono Central. I couldn't locate a particular senator I must recognize who was the chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum, Senator Rushas Kenayo. I couldn't pick him, but I must recognize him because it was, we cannot talk of APC today without remembering the effort the governors at that time put together to broker the ultimate negotiation and deal that brought about the birth of the great party on whose platform we are all here and we are trying to build a strong United Nations. Can, uh, Senator Rushas, can I go with I recognize you? But it's not the only one. Senator Tanqua Almakura, Masarawa South, I recognize you. My brother, my brother, and uh, a, a fellow Westerner with whom again we work together as a region, Senator Ibukule Amusu of Central, I recognize you. Now, to the nostalgia. Some senators there work intimately 
with my principal at the I met him. And it was through that that I had permission with them. I got it. Then the commission. Do that, Senator. Senator Dr. Ojibu I salute you, sir. I recognize Senator Muhammad Dali Mabuji, who is central. I recognize Ibrahim Chekarao. Senator Kabir Gaya, Senator Muhammad Adamu Adeu, Senator Bilal Adamu, Senator Ebu, Senator Ibrahim Jendam, Abdul. This done, this done, this done. This done, I must. I must once again. Thank Almighty Allah for the grace of being in front of you to again let Nigerians through you know who Abu Raouf Adesoja Rekwesola is. But I will not go into this without first of all thanking and appreciating greatly the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, for this great honor and privilege of being considered as fit and qualified to serve in his cabinet as a minister with your approval and confirmation. I will, I will eternally be grateful for that opportunity. And I must acknowledge the role played by the leaders from my region, particularly Chief Abdul Karim Adibisi Akonde, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, Are Moshe Gonshoba, and Otumbani Adibayo. These are our leaders who had led us with courage and good direction to get to where we are. Once again, I'm Marek I bring here 39 years of post-qualification experience in engineering, management, public administration, leadership, and resilience with a huge dose of politics, that is political orientation. And I must say that Lagos provided the great opportunity for me outside professional preparation to test my capacity to manage human beings and resources for the maximum benefit of the largest number of people. It was in Lagos that under the leadership of Ajayubala Tinubu and a team of dedicated young men, we dared the impossible and turned around the fortune of Lagos to that of undoubted leadership in the Nigerian political space. It was in Lagos that we built, that we developed a master plan for development, physical development, and political development that is still subsisting and showing the way for those who want development. However, no matter the, the, the work I did along with others in Lagos to bring out what leadership is, it was in Oshun that I want to thank Almighty God for the courage, the capacity I had to in eight years use the minimum resources available to impart on the lives of very many citizens of that state. In Oshun, in the eight years that I served, I was able to give meaning to the fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy which is in the section 8, section 2B of the Constitution, 
where it is clearly stated that the primary responsibility of all governments is to guarantee security and welfare of the people. It doesn't talk about elite. It does not talk about a minority. It says the people. It was in Oshun that God provided me the capacity to do this. And to do this, we crossed and offended some few interests without any regret. Because at the end of the day, in a democracy, it is the majority that matters. So I'm happy that the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, in their Human Development Index report released in October of 2018, in Oshun, the poverty index by those two bodies was 37.5% by 2010. Whereas, four years down the line, we are turned it around, and Oshun recorded the lowest poverty index in Nigeria of 17.5%. How? It's not what I want to talk about. What I talk about is the fact that my credo is that power is responsibility. And responsibility here is about how you impact directly on the people. And that we sought to do, and God permitted us to have impact on the space and people. Equally along that direction, the National Bureau of Statistics in 2010 says, the unemployment rate in 2010 that we met was 17.2 percent, and by 2017, Oshun's unemployment was 5.3 percent, the second lowest in Nigeria. Out of school children reduced from 12.8 percent in 2011 to 10.5 percent in 2016, according to UNICEF Multi Indicator Cluster Survey of 2016 and 2017. According to the National Bureau of Statistics report on JAMP, because there is this usual misinformation that our educational performance is not anything to write about. Far from it. JAMP reported and amplified by MBS that the JAMP admission for in the last seven years, JAMP admission that is, students admitted to tertiary institutions all over Nigeria, or shown as ranked among the top three in the last seven years. If I go on repeating, in, 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 according to the National Bureau of Statistics in 2018 security report, or should recorded 0.9 crime incidence rate, being the lowest in the Southwest state, I wouldn't know what our rank is in the nation. In eight years, we struggle how to deliver inclusive development because our program, our program on assumption of duty as a governor in the state was based on six integral action plan. Banish poverty, banish hunger, banish unemployment, promote healthy living, promote functional education, promote communal, communal peace, and in the course of that, we deliver 1,200 kilometers of road, new roads. We fed on a daily basis for six years, 244,000 school children is the longest running program of that nation in Nigeria. We won $2 million grant on, into, on Save One Million Lives program of the Federal Ministry. Your Excellency, you can round up so that we have another round. You can round up. However, however, there is a point I want to make before I round up, sir which is important. 
I must not fail to add that I am a, and my administration faced lots of criticisms while in government, particularly on salaries, which I want to clear. This is due largely to ignorance and partly to mischief. By 2014, our nation was in distress. I won't go into the details. No. And virtually all the states of Nigeria had some challenges with salaries. But we came up in Oshun with an innovative approach, which ensured that there was no month that any public servant in our state was without a salary. How? We ensured between July of 2015 and July of 2018, let's be clear on this, that public servants on level one to seven, and they constitute about 72% of the public servants in the state, and they are full pay. And not only the, the, the active public servants, equally passive public servants, that is pensioners, who are left and were between the salary scale of level one to seven. According to the belief that every civil servant in Oshun was on 50%, that is not true. Secondly, public servants on level 10 to 12 had 75% of their salary between July of 2015 and 2018, July, while those on level 12 and above public servants, including political office holders, and 50%. Before I left, we had cleared some of the areas, and I'm happy that my successor is still clearing the areas. So, Mr. President, as I'm rounding up, I wish to say that you have, you have before you a Nigerian that has been tested in all rounds of human endeavor and is willing and ready to serve. I thank you. Senators Anna Yorocha Sokoracha, Theodi Oji, and Hassan Mohamed Busong. In that order, please. Mr. President, sitting as chair. <laughs> when the great philosopher Emerson said that I quote, power is a trust which can only be justified when used for the benefit of the common man. When he was saying that, he was talking about Rauf Arbusala. <laughs> And if there's one asset among the nominees, who can look at the Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Because no man is perfect. Mm -hmm. And preventure, Mr. President makes any mistake in any decision. This man will tell him, just like I would do. <laughs> <laughs> Only two of you. He was a colleague one that loves this country and prays for this country. The coming of Rauf into the Executive Council is indeed a blessing. <laughs> as, as, as a colleague, we never agreed on many issues. We didn't agree on many issues as a colleague, but principles brought us together. I remember vividly as their chairman himself, Oshimole. Yes. Please. You are protected. You have the protection. You have the protection of the chair. <laughs> himself, the governor of Kaduna, um, Erufai. Oshimole, that all of you know about. 
and most of the governors, he particularly talks nothing but about the unity of this country and how we can all move Nigeria forward. So my friend and my brother and my colleague, there's a let down rule here that in this whole country, Nigeria, only senators and women should be allowed to take a bow and go. <laughs> I've accepted that. And the matter became worse even when they are limited to leader and deputy leader speaking on my behalf against <laughs> my wish. <laughs> Be that is I want to plead with my colleagues as a, as a former governor. that though this man is not a senator, no, he's not a but he had brought, he has made senators. Oh. May you please, <laughs> and he's, 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 he's very gender sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> and I shall can bear me witness. <laughs> For that reason, please can we honor us oh, no. the giving to whom honor is due take to bow. take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> yes. I shall submit. Yes. 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 Thank you, Your Excellency, sitting in chair, my distinguished colleagues. My name is Senator T. A. Oji Ochen, Abia Central. Your Excellency, we have had a pact here, and the pact that I will keep to is that you don't exceed two questions, and that your question has to be direct. Your Excellency, former Governor and now minister-to-be. I congratulate you for this feat. But it will look somehow if a person of your caliber and magnitude will come here and just take a bow and go. Because we want to draw from your experience and inspiration. Therefore, I'll just ask one. I reduce it to one simple question which you can answer. And that is the issue of taxation. Today, there are multiple taxation everywhere across the tier, three tiers of government. Ministries, parastatals, you know, imposing taxes on one issue. And this does not make for ease of business. And we want to encourage business in Nigeria. Excellency, going into the Executive Council. What will be your attitude towards this so that businessmen will be encouraged to invest and we will grow? Thank you very much. Senator Hassan Mohamed Guso. Mr. Chairman, my name is Senator Hassan Mohamed Kurunzan for Central. Your Excellency. issue of salaries. During your explanation, you have said you have been paying salary in front. But from uh, uh, the purpose, I many, many uh, uh, mails, papers, we read that you cannot be able to pay salary for the last one year before your departure. Even though you explained, but you didn't explain in detail. Please, can you say more about salary, issue of salary in your shoe state? Before you leave. Thank you. Senator Elisha Shaku Abo. Thank you, Mr. The Senate President, now sitting as chair. Thank you for the opportunity. My name remains Senator Shaku Abo representing the people of Adamawa North Central District. I want to join my colleague from Oshun and from the entire Southwest to extol the virtues of this great Nigerian. I remember in 2012 when I contested for the chairmanship of my local government 
as a very tiny young man. I visited you in Abuja, I mean in, uh, in Ikeja, Jerry Ikeja in your house. You never knew me. You asked me to come in and I stated my problems and you told me to come to government house in Oshobo and meet you. When I got there, I thought I would stay there for three days without seeing the governor. I filled a form, you saw my name, and you ushered me into your office upstairs. And you gave me the whole of your salary for that month to go to Adamawa and contest election. Today, through the grace of God, I am one of the people confirming your nomination. <laughs> I want to join my colleagues to please allow this detribalized, honest Nigerian to take a bow and go. And also ask of Mr. President of Nigeria using this medium to give you a very big ministry. God bless you, sir. <laughs> You, you can respond to the questions raised. I can respond. Mr. President, distinguished senator, administration of taxes, my, my leader, the truth is Nigeria is a federation, and I'm a federalist. You see, there is a limit to what we can do on taxation in the Federation. Let's be clear on that. However, I understand where you're coming from and I agree with you, but I will differ slightly. I would have loved to go into this because we have left the rich men in Nigeria without discharging their responsibilities to the citizens, particularly on taxation. So I'm going to pioneer privileged taxes for those who have huge resources or wealth from which Nigerians must stop. If I go into this, there might be some ill feelings in some quarters. I won't go deeper than that. I will recommend serious taxation for wealthy people in Nigeria. If that will now translate into lifting the burden on the states and the local government to reduce their pension for taxes that make poor people, poor people still give out of their inadequate resource of course, I would have been satisfied. So I will advocate a just taxation system that will breed inequality in our polity. Salary in Oshun, I want to repeat again clearly that the narrative on salary in Oshun is either mischievous or based on ignorance. Nobody can pretend that the Nigerian economy did not suffer a huge downfall from 2014 up until when the current administration came in with some palliatives to support the states. Of course, Oshun was quite hugely affected. Why? We had invested heavily in infrastructure that was totally neglected before. And I must add quickly, probably people don't know this. Personnel cost a loan, personnel cost a loan on my, my uh, revenue, both statutory and generated, was 63%. Personnel cost a loan. There is a history to that. Oshu was taken out of Oyo. Before that, Oshu provided close to 70% of the senior civil servants in Oyo and were all asked to move. So, 
Oshun population is Oshun Oshun civil service population is huge, but is top heavy. Whereas levels one to seven that constitute seventy two percent of the public servants, they take less than one billion. While the top cat, the fat cats in the in level eight and above, who are less than thirty percent of the of the civil servants take over two billion. So I'm, all, I'm I was therefore forced to do interesting balancing. Short of retrenching people, I had to constitute a panel under the leadership of Comrade Azan Sumonu to monitor all in, all inflows, all revenue income and apportion whatever is left to salaries. And that we did innovatively. How? We knew that officers on levels one to seven cannot even survive on their salary if fully paid. So we pay them their full salary, not only officers, even pensioners, pay them their full salary. I never owed anybody on levels one to seven a dime of their salaries. Officers on levels 8 to 10 had 75% of their salary to write my tenure. And that ended July 2018, please. We stopped, we stopped any partial payment or to anybody in July of 2018. Don't forget I left in November 2018, but we stopped this part payment by July. We are stabilized. It was only those officers on levels 12 and above that had to earn 50 million salary between July of 2015 and July of 2018. That's about salary. On testimony, I thank you. I've forgotten. Please, I'm happy that you have reminded me. I give glory to God. Mr. Chair, especially the has only five minutes left. Especially to be thanked is Ashwabra Machinubu, who tutored me in being large, hearted, and kind to whoever comes to me for support. Excuse me, please. The Sungu Senators, uh, Basiru Surajuddin Ajibola, Senator Oriyo Lowo Aderele Ademi, and Senator Francis Fadaonsi, in that order. The president sitting as the chair, <laughs> distinguished senators, I'm Dr. Surajuddin Ajibola Bashiru. I extend courtesies to distinguished senators. I, I must say here that it is paradox of democracy that I'm here sitting in this other chamber on hearing confirmation of somebody who is my leader my mentor and my benefactor by the grace of Almighty God. I served under him throughout the eight years of administration in Oshu. So the story that he's telling is a story that brings clear to us that with meager resources, we were able to see what we can do to alleviate, particularly the mass of our people, not the bourgeoisies. And I will say that for those that talk about salary, I stand here to say, that as commissioner in second term, my take home pay total is 184,000 naira. None of us commissioners got an official car, and I did not stay in official accommodation. I served in the first term as honorable commissioner for regional integration and special duties. I was also the chairman of consultancy board. In the second term, as attorney general and commissioner for justice. One salient challenge that we have as black people is how do we harness our resources? How do we get finance to bridge infrastructure deficits? By the time we were to get government in Oshu, he made it clear. He said, Bashiru, if in two years we could not make any impact in infrastructure development, we should apologize to Oshu people and we should just leave government. And of course, the month that the government took over, we learned that one billion was taken in overdraft before we came in to even pay salary. And yet, we have projects that we need to do. 
So told us we don't have any choice. We have to raise money by deficit financing to ensure that we accelerate financing of projects that will impact on the economy of our people. What did we do? We had two options, to go by way of commercial lending or to open our books to the public and go to the public sector. Money market, a capital market financing. And that is the route that we took based on the parameters of the economy of Nigeria in 2011 and 2012. So when, as he has narrated, 2014 challenges came of all the parameters change, and then we have to adjust the way we have done. But that did not stop any of our projects. I'm happy to announce to you, and I say it proudly here, that I feel satisfied that I've worked with my leader, with my mentor, and I feel satisfied that when we are confronted about stewardship, we are happy that God has used us to assist in lifting, particularly those people who have never had opportunity of enjoying government patronage. I thank you, colleagues, for the honor to allow him to bow and go. Thank you, my leader. Mr. The chairman, distinguished senators, uh, I want to thank God for giving me this unique opportunity. I don't know if, if ever I will have the opportunity of recommending this man standing before me today because he's my mentor, he's my role model, he's my leader. Even though we schooled together in the Polytechnic from year 1976 to, seven, to 78 before I left for University of Ife. But it is a common saying that human beings do change. But this is a man I met to be a, a, a fighter for the downtrodden masses, right from the 70s. And he has not changed up to today. Uh, in 1977, we had to do our IT student uh, industrial training. Without seeing each other, there are a lot of placements in Southwest. Only three of us out of the whole lot of students from the Polytechnic but choose the Kano without seeing ourselves. So the, we are three that went to Kano to do our mm -hmm. IT. Incidentally, we didn't know anybody there. We have never been there. And we had to be sleeping in only one single room with a three and a half bed. So don't, anybody that wants to eat dinner will not sleep on that bed. You will sleep on the mat. It's an interesting thing. And where we used to trek from, uh, uh, is it bonfire to brigade? Every morning. Um, later, after 30 years, I was a general manager at uh, Osun when my friend mandate was returned to him, and he came as the governor of the state of Austria. Um, on his coming, I was surprised the way he managed the state. In spite of the meager amount of money coming to the state, he quickly realized that international interventions could help the state. And he, he even went for credit to pay the counterpart fund of all the international intervention in the state of Osun. And uh, apart from the fact that Osun State, among all other states in the Southwest, was chosen for rural access and mobility project, throughout my 35 years working with international organizations, World Bank, French Development Agency, Islamic Development Bank, and so on. I've never come across a time when the bank came up to say that a project run by a state is the best in Nigeria. By April this year, the World Bank, and I'm saying this knowing fully well that everybody in the world in Nigeria are hearing me, including the World Bank itself, they came up and rank 
also state ram which uh, Ogbeni was running as the best in Nigeria. Um, to this, I want to take the privilege of being a senator today to say that Ogbeni, Rauf Arek Beshola, should take a bow and go. Thank you very much. Point of order, Minority Leader. Mr. President, order 591. 59-1. After a question has been proposed, a senator writing is may claim to move that the question be now put. Let the question be seconded, the motion. Senator Francis Fadon, see, second the motion. President of the Senate, sitting as the chairman, um, I second the motion, and uh, that the question be asked but after my own. <laughs> 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 Second the motion, that's all. in favor of the motion that the nominee takes a bow and go. Say aye. aye. Those against say no. The ayes have it. You can take a bow. 